everybody, my name is Heather. I'm one of the bird keepers here at the zoo. Um, thank you for joining our zoo to you virtual safari today. I um, also want to give a shout out to everybody who's donated so far to help the zoo out, buying memberships, any of those fun things. We really appreciate it. Um, you can continue to donate if you want by pushing the uh, link in your screen throughout the video. Um, but today we're here in Lorikeet Adventure, seeing some of our fun Lorikeet friends. Um, we'll kind of walk around a little bit and see who we can find and who wants to <laughs> zoom by. Um, this right here is Jerome. He's actually a um, fan favorite here. He's a very friendly bird. He was hand raised, so he's pretty um, used to coming up. To him. Sometimes he gets super excited about that. So he's one that people often get to know. Do we have Captain America out yeah, here? I Captain think we America see him. Over here, he's probably the fan favorite. Most people recognize him. He's the only one of his species that we have here at the zoo. So he is a blue streaked lord. Name for those blue kind of eye masks on his uh, face there. And he's the only one that's a true lorry in this exhibit. Um, all lorikeets kind of fall under the lorry umbrella, but our other three species all are actually lorikeets, and he is a lorry. He's got that here. All right, so these three up here are some of our coconut lorikeets. So there's two species that um, are most of our flock, our rainbows and our coconuts. These guys are our coconuts. The way you can kind of tell this species the easiest is those stripes on their chest. So um, that top half of the chest that is orange and blue striped on a rainbow lorikeet, which we'll see in a minute, um, that's more orange and yellow solid instead of those nice stripey patterns. So that's the easy way. So There's we have a, a rainbow right here? Yes, so that is a rainbow right there. So you can see the difference in that chest. That's the easiest way to tell um, from a distance. There's a few others as well. And if you look at these guys, this one's a really good example of that nice pointed lorikeet tail instead of that rounded one that uh, Captain America had over there. How big are baby lorikeets? Um, tiny. So, um, when they first hatch, they're, like, I don't even know how to show you, they're like, would fit in that. <laughs> um, I only know weights in grams because that's how we do it here, but uh, a hatchling weighs about five to six grams, so super, super tiny. Um, to give you some kind of estimate, our adults weigh between 120 and 150 second if there's all right michelle wants to know what do lorikeets eat what do lorikeets eat that is a great question um anybody who's been to our exhibit has had the chance to feed them some nectar um that actually is a very crucial part of their diet it's not just a random treat that we have guests um feed them it's what they get fed every day um so these guys are naturally nectar and fruit eaters so here at the zoo during the day they get that nectar so even though there's nobody here to hand them little cups of nectar a day, they still get bowls put out for them. Um, and then in the evening, they get fruits and vegetables. Do the birds have individual personalities, Heather? Definitely. Um, I get asked all the time how I can tell them apart, and it's a combination of a lot of things. Um, a lot of it is personality. Um, obviously, we talked a little bit about the different species, so that's it as well. Um, but the different personalities help a also who they kind of around. They all have bands on their legs that are unique to them. So anybody that has our list that maybe doesn't very often could come in and look at that list and figure out who is who. Um, but you get to know them pretty well. They all are a little bit different. We have a question asking, what other bird species are lorikeets closely related to? Uh, lorikeets are a type of parrot. Um, so the big fancy family group name is Cetacene. Um, but any of our pets, so cockatoos, macaws, African greys, eclectus, um, conyers, all of those are in that same pair. Kaylin, seven years old, wants to know if lorikeets sleep. They do sleep. Um, our lorikeets sleep at night, um, just like we do. They also sometimes you'll see them taking naps throughout the day. Um, they usually are going to sit on a nice perch, but they're going to probably get a more comfy perch. So something with a, they don't have to hold on to quite as tight. We do have a few who actually, one of our night keepers has told me that likes to sleep on the ground at night, um, <laughs> which is a little weird, but um, some of them do that. We also have one bird in here named Buckbeak who actually likes to sleep hanging upside down on our caging. So. Now we're looking at a lorikeet who's better uh, yes. feather days. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, they all went there for a minute. So explain what that process is and why we've got some gray and okay. patchy spots. Um, so this is Trey. 
Um, Trey is a coconut lorikeet. Um, and a lot of different things can cause it. We have a few birds in here that have some of those feather issues. Trey's exact story um, is kind of a handful of things. Um, one, he actually has a, a low thyroid, um, so he is on medication for that. That won't cause feather loss, but it can hurt feather quality. Um, it's the same. I have a dog at home that has the same problem, and before she had medication, her coat was really thin. It's the same as that. Um, we think kind of during that phase when he was before he had that regulated with the medication um, he started picking those feathers um, unfortunately what happens is that's a bad habit that gets developed it's very similar to us biting our nails something kind of made you start doing it um, but then very often you keep doing it whether you're stressed or not so we've been doing a lot of stuff socially do the lorikeets notice a lack of people um lorikeet adventure do they miss the guests I would have to say yes. Um, I mean, especially for the lorikeets, they're used to having people in here all day, every day. Um, so, I mean, they actually interact with our guests more than some other animals who might just see them from afar. Um, so yeah, I'm sure they do. Um, every now and then, when I walk through, I have three birds coming over to greet me, even though they have plenty of food and stuff like that. So yeah, I think they definitely notice that it's different in here. <laughs> It's a little bit quieter. I mean, despite all the chirping, <laughs> it still manages yes. to be quiet in here. Um, this is a question from Dave. How fast can they fly? That is a great question, Dave, and I have no idea the answer <laughs> to that. Um, these guys aren't made for speed or really fast flyers like your peregrine falcons. Those were hunters, so they need to be fast to catch things. These guys are eating fruit and flowers, so they don't, they aren't meant for speed. So they can fly fast enough to probably get away if they needed to, but they're not made to be extremely fast. But actual number, I have no idea. That's a great one. Um, let's see. Emma asks, what different colors are they? It might be a little hard to see because the sun's in a weird spot right now, but yeah. it looks like green, yellow, orange, blue. They're just beautiful. They are. They have all of those different colors in them. Um, luckily for these birds, it's a beautiful sunny day, but I'm sure the video isn't quite as, <laughs> <laughs> as great as it is for these guys right now. Yeah, so again, we are doing Zoo to You Virtual Safari from Denver Zoo, and if you can donate, we would appreciate it at this time. Our gates are closed, which means a lot of our revenue is not there, so any donations we can get at this time, if you can renew a membership, if you can buy a new membership, that will be effective as soon as we open. We would appreciate it. We need those donations right now, and every dollar helps, so thank you to everyone who has donated so far. This is our Facebook Live. We're in Lorikeet Adventure with Keeper Heather talking about our lorikeets. Again, how many different species of lorikeets do we have in here? We have four total. So two of them are a majority and then we have two species that there's one each. So Captain America is a red one that people see in here that we saw a little bit earlier. And then we have a bird named Copper who is the only one of his species as well. I'll try to point him out while I see him come near. Sarah is curious, how do they like our Colorado winters? Um, I think obviously they like it better warm, but Colorado's nice because we get those really nice days in the middle of winter anyway. So these guys do have um, indoor housing and even in the middle of summer we bring them in every night, we get a good count on everybody, look everybody over, um, and then they can have access to the exhibit. When it's cold enough overnight they stay inside overnight. Um, same thing in the winter, if it's too cold they can't go out during the day. Um, but we make sure that they kind of have everything they need in there and luckily we have lots of beautiful sunny days. That's great. Now we do breed these here at yeah. Denver Zoo in our avian prop center. Um, talk about what it's like to hand rear a, a lorikeet. Um, yeah, so we've hand reared a few this summer. Hopefully you guys I think saw Bruce Lee earlier today and mm -hmm. Chuck Norris a few weeks ago. Um, so we've got a few chicks that we've been hand rearing. Um, this year and it's it's a lot of work baby birds need to be fed um, so when they it's feeding them um, every two hours is you're going in and feeding them so it's kind of a full-time job uh, <laughs> who's this this is Hodor who's actually best friends with copper so he might be near oh copper's actually behind us this is that other species oh this is the other species yeah. of lorikeet that's copper. If you notice his chest, it's solid, but it's very dark orange instead of kind of an orange and yellow mix. And he is a scarlet breasted lorikeet. So he's that fourth species. So scarlet breasted? Scarlet breasted. Rainbow? Yes. And coconut? Yes. 
And then Captain is a blue streaked Lori. And Captain is a blue streaked Lori. All right, there's Captain America. I know he's a fan favorite for everyone. Let's get a good look at him. Uh, Mary wants to know, uh, why do they have sharp beaks? And that's going to help them get to their food. So they're going to be able to break into any fruit. They really like soft stuff, but they want to be able to chew apple and all that kind of stuff as well. Get the good nectar out of the flowers, all of that kind of stuff. So, How many do we have? Um, we have about 40 here at the zoo total right now. Um, our flock out here at the moment is 25. We have some that are rated for breeding, stuff like that. We have some youngsters that are starting to get to know the flock, as you maybe saw earlier, but um, aren't out here at the moment. For those of you curious, we do have these Facebook Lives to our Denver Zoo YouTube page later in the afternoon of the broadcast. And you can go to denverzoo.org slash zoo to you, where we have activities, resources, and these videos posted throughout the day. So you have two different ways you can access those. Thanks for everyone who's joining. Thanks to everyone who's donated. How long do they sleep? Michelle wants to know. Everyone wants to know how much an animal sleeps. You know what? <laughs> um, honestly, like I said, they sleep overnight. They probably get a pretty good um, sleep overnight once it gets light in the morning. They're up when I get in here at um, 7 or 7.30 in the morning. They're already up and at them. Um, oh, is this so copper again? That's copper again, yeah. Um, so they get a good night's sleep, but I don't know exactly how long. And like I said, some of them take naps throughout the day. <laughs> like we all do. We, right? all, we all want a good, <laughs> good nap. Where can these birds be found in the wild? A lot of people want to know. Um, these guys are from Australia and New Zealand, um, mostly New Zealand and some of the kind of islands around there. Oh, and this is Jerome on top of your head. Oh, is he there? Is he there? Oh, okay. Yeah, no, Jerome has uh, <laughs> decided to perch on top of my head. Yep, there he goes. All right. <laughs> and where, what is going on when they all kind of take off like that? So it's a couple of different things. Um, and here's Captain America still. Yeah, let's look at Captain. He's like, that's ah, too much effort. <laughs> Um, what happened right then is a cormorant flew over the exhibit, which is not a bird that's going to be any danger to them. Obviously, they're in an enclosed exhibit anyway, but um, these guys would be considered a prey species, so any large predatory bird flying overhead would be scary. Um, since these guys are a flock species, once one bird says danger, they no matter what say, oh no danger, and they go with. Um, they don't care if they have a chunk of my hair. Yeah, they, and... don't, they don't care about any of that. Um, so yeah, that happens several times a day. And I'm sure people, if they've been in our exhibit when that happens before, it's all, everybody's like, what's going on? We're like, okay. something flew overhead. That's you just it. have to redirect and get your nectar somewhere else. <laughs> so they're really engaged with guests. Why do you think they're so uh, people friendly? Um, parrots in general tend to be, I won't say necessarily friendly, um, but they're very social animals. Um, which obviously includes these guys. Not only are they parrots, but they're parrots who live in um, big flocks. They're very social anyway. Um, so it's pretty easy, I feel like, for them to kind of add people into their flock. They are very curious. Uh, they're, you know, they're more willing to kind of see what's going on, go find the food, all of that kind of stuff. Heather, someone wants to know, what's your favorite part about working with Laura Keats? Um, I think getting to know them individually, like we talked about earlier, they all have different personalities. Um, it took a little while, I've been working with these guys for about a year and a half, but when I first started I was like, how will I ever know who's who, and now <laughs> as they fly up I can be like, oh that's so and so, and this is who's joining us. So um, it's very cool to kind of get to know them, and them as individuals as well as a flock. Besides nectar, is there anything else they eat? Um, they eat fruits and vegetables as well. Fruits and vegetables. Do we ever prep that? How do we prep that and serve it to them? Um, so being parrots, they can kind of chew off things. So they can get like a whole apple and they'll chew off the pieces they want. Um, our nutrition team delivers our diet. So they get kind of a weighed out amount every day. And it's a variety of um, approved fruits and veggies. And we get kind of smaller chunks cut up into little pieces just so there's plenty to go around and nobody has to fight over food. Um, and then we also get big chunks that we can kind of put around on different branches and stuff so we can kind of spread food out as much as possible. And they get that um, at night. Do these birds have any cool adaptations that kids can know about? Um, I'm sure they do. <laughs> um, let me think about that one for a second. Well, do they have any natural predators? I mean, they're so brightly colored. They're easy to spot, obviously. Um, yeah, so they are going to have some predators. 
usually it would probably be like I said, they're a little nervous about large birds flying <laughs> overhead. Just a little. Um, a lot of times with these birds that live in this big flock, uh, it's helpful for them to kind of stick together. So they kind of, we're all going to go over here and that makes it harder to pick out one bird. Um, so that's kind of the way they live is going to be something. And then yeah, they seem so brightly colored, but if you notice, their backs are all green. So if you're looking at them from overhead, they would blend nicely into any green grass or plants or anything below them. And they'd actually be a little harder to see from above. Very, very cool. Someone wants to know, is this as big as they get? Yes, yes. Everybody that's out here is full grown. And actually they get to be their full grown size about two months of age. So they oh, grow really quickly. And that's a really common thing with birds. We see they grow really fast. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Um. We've heard it's because they have to kind of go out yeah, on their own. Exactly. So with all of our, it's very common in any bird that it depends on flight. Um, so they, by the time they get their adult feathers and need to be able to fly, they're going to be full size. They need to be able to kind of move around and take care of themselves. Um, it's a lot of work for mom and dad, whatever the case may be, but in Laura Keith's mom and dad, um, to keep feeding them and stuff like that. So they want them as soon as possible to grow up and be able to go forage on their own. Do lorikeets build nests? Um, kind of. These guys are what's called a cavity nest. They nest in holes, so they will dig out holes and things. Um, on, in our exhibit, you'll notice a lot of logs and stuff on the ground, and you'll see even, I don't know if you can see this, but this top of this post, that's them actually chewing out the top, the wood. So the lorikeets did this? Yes. Very so you'll cool. see a lot of those around our exhibit. We try to replace them as they get back, but um, but yeah, so they actually will dig out holes and things, so that's very natural for them. Very cool. Do you have a favorite lorikeet in here? Oh, I do not play favorites. I have about 25 in here right now. <laughs> I know, it's a very controversial question to ask a keeper who their favorite is because there's enough love to go around. <laughs> there is certainly enough love to go around. A lot of guests know a lot of these birds by name as well. Yes. They're very popular. Not just Captain America because he's so distinctive. He's right. so good. He's just hanging out. Getting super geeky and sciencey. <laughs> their feet are made that so at rest they're holding on. So while for us holding on seems like a lot of work, we have to think about holding on to something, their feet automatically hold on when they stand on something. So that is just a natural, mm -hmm. natural way for their feet to be. Yes. So while, while you would have to toes or right. bend your head to hold on to something that is just a natural their feet kind resting of stance for them without them having to think about it well aren't they lucky <laughs> hello captain america say hello everyone this is captain america he is a blue streaked lorry yes all right and he's the only one of his kind here in laura keat adventure at denver zoo apparently has somewhere very exciting to be over there yes he wants to go over to that rope. All right. Yeah, we respect that. Over to the nectar bowl. <laughs> yes, we can. We have some nectar bowls set up. So as you guys know, we like to uh, let guests buy nectar. They can feed it. And so don't worry. There is plenty. Your cup is normally around that size. They're getting whole bowls yeah, they of get nectar right now. Yeah, they put out every few hours. So they get fed throughout the day. Now, do we bring them in overnight or are they allowed to stay out here? Um, it depends on the temperature. This time of year, they are um, kept inside. They, no matter how warm it is, they always have access overnight to the inside area. Um, but yeah, when it's cold, below uh, 50 degrees overnight, they'll be locked inside. And if it's above that, then they can have access to both the exhibit and the inside area. How does one go about getting two dozen birds inside? <laughs> um, we actually get asked that question a lot. It's pretty fun. Um, and it goes with a lot of training with these guys. So we actually have a cowbell that we ring. Um, so we, like I said, they get their fruit and veggie at night. So we set up the inside, we have that. Mealworms are some of their favorite treats. So we try to use that to make sure it's nice and exciting in there. Um, and then when we go and open the door so they can go in and we ring a bell for everybody to come in and we kind of give them a few minutes and everybody flies in usually. And mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> then they go every now and then. We have a few birds who kind of are like, if I wait long enough, you're gonna come bribe me inside with all kinds of good stuff. But yeah, some people say uh, herding cats is hard, but uh, I gotta think <laughs> hoarding lorikeets. Herding lorikeets is a little harder. This is another example of those holes yeah, yeah. that they 
make yeah, in our so posts. They naturally should chew wood, so that's a very natural behavior. It just doesn't look as pretty in our exhibit. No, it doesn't. But if you see that, it's just another form of enrichment for our animals that we give. Captain America's just kind of wandering around. He's got two whole nectar bowls to himself. I know. He's got all kinds of fun things. Thank you to everyone who's tuning in. There goes Captain America. There's that back area where we get them in overnight if the temperature requires it. This is Lorikeet Adventure. We are at Denver Zoo's Zoo to You Virtual Safari. Thank you to everyone who's tuning in and donating. We appreciate every donation people can give right now. We know it's a tough time, but we appreciate your support as we're closed. But we're happy to be able to bring the zoo to you through these lives. So if you have any questions, someone wants to know how tough are their beaks? If they can kind of nest through wood, they're pretty strong, aren't they? Uh, yeah, they are pretty strong. It's not fun to get bit by a lorikeet. Um, I will say that. <laughs> um, but yeah, they are pretty strong, pretty strong beaks. Are they really chatty? They, they were chirping a lot earlier, and now they're kind of quiet. Mm -hmm. Do they socialize? Do they get real um, excited with one another? They do. Um, one of the nice things about this exhibit is they kind of have room to spread out, do their own thing, have their own social interactions, and kind of get to pick and choose who they want to hang out with. So sometimes you'll hear birds being like, hey, come play with me, or like, hey, this is my nectar bowl and I don't want you around, or whatever. So um, they are very vocal, and a lot of that's communicating with each other. Now you talked about the kind of social dynamics. Tell me a little bit about those in this exhibit. Do all the birds get along? Are there some pairs that are thick as thieves? Um, yes. So. While they're a flock and they depend on having lots of friends, they really do kind of pair off or form small groups as far as the ones they really hang out with. Um, this one right here eating, you may have noticed, came over to eat and another bird left. Uh, this is Marcuccio and his uh, girlfriend, Peppermint Patty, is the one on the top of the trash can. <laughs> um, these two, and they have another friend, Apollo, who hangs out with them. Um, I don't see him at the moment, but he's usually by their side. Um, they're kind of some of the more dominant birds in the area, so uh, Pluto was over here eating and Mercutio came up and immediately left without there being any drama. So they kind of have their hierarchies and stuff. Um, usually they, they have enough space and everything to work it out amongst themselves. But. Wow. So for those of you asking, the donation link, you can do it right through Facebook or you can go to denverzoo.org slash emergency hyphen fund if you want to donate. Also, that information is just on the homepage of denverzoo.org. We appreciate anything you all can donate right now. So this is a cute pair you said they're boyfriend and girlfriend? Yes. These guys have, um, they are some of our older um, birds in this exhibit, but they have, I think, two chicks in this flock who are now full-grown adults and everything. I think they're five or six. And um, so, you know, we can, how do we uh, sex a bird? Tell if it's a male or a female. That's a great question. From our lorikeets, you can't tell by looking at them. Um, if you look at these guys, that's Apollo. Their third uh, friend there. Um, you can't tell a difference of which one's peppermint patty unless you, like, look at her bands or you know them or whatever. Um, so we actually do DNA sexing. So we can use blood. We can actually use feathers. Um, what we do now with all of our birds that are hatching out, we can actually take eggshell as long as there's some um, DNA in that eggshell, we can send that in. So we try to be as um, least invasive as possible, but yeah, um, but yeah, we can grab um, feathers and send them off to a lab for DNA sexing is how we do, how we tell sexes. Evan wants to know if we have to give them baths. Um, that's actually a really great question. Bathing is really important for lorikeets. Um, so we actually have several bowls throughout the exhibit as well. Um, we think uh, Captain America is the oldest. You think Captain America is the oldest? And yes. you don't know his exact age, but what is your kind of um, guesstimate? About 19. About 19. Or at least 19. So we do not want them to breed. <laughs> we'll let them um, kind of go through all the motions here in the flock, but they're not ones we pull aside to try to breed. Well, they can hang. That's just good breeding behaviors. All right. And again, someone's asking how many do we have in here? Uh, 25 right now. So what other types of enrichment or activities do these birds get? Um, so we do most of our extra enrichment in our um, holding area overnight because they have lots of good opportunities out here but you might can see some things hanging around just different perching opportunities. Like I said they like to chew on wood and stuff so anything they can break up they really like um, destroying cardboard boxes and things like that. 
They like thing cardboard boxes that they can get in as well. Um, so pretty much anything they can destroy. Um, some of them really like toys that make noise, like bells and things like that. Um, but we have a variety of, of different things we do in there, just try to keep them busy. Great, well we'll take a few more questions before we wrap up. Again, if you would like to, this live will be on our YouTube page later this afternoon and will be on that Denver Zoo virtual safari